Hey everyone, hopefully you enjoyed my previous video outlining the new features in the February 2016 update to Adobe Muse. Uh, before we really get into all the great features in detail, uh, I'm already seeing people arguing about the definition of responsive design. And because of that, I've created a website so we can take a look at the different options that we have. Because the question isn't so much responsive or not, it's responsive or what. There are four different layout types. and Understanding those layout types is important for yourself, and this website here, responsiveorwhat.com, can help you win those arguments with your friends and colleagues. Uh, but aside from winning arguments, you're gonna have to explain to your clients if you're building a website for someone, um, what does responsive mean? Because now that you can build a responsive website, you're probably asking your clients, would you like your website to be responsive? The likely response that you'll get from the client is, what does that mean? I don't, I don't know, you tell me, you're the designer. So it helps to be able to explain, and explaining starts with understanding. So a lot of people do not understand exactly what responsive design is, so I want to demystify that once and for all. So as we move forward talking about the features, we're all on the same page. So the first thing that I want you guys to understand is static design, uh, because it's the easiest, it's what you're used to, it's old school. Static design is the page is a specific width, uh, that specific width does not change uh, under any circumstance. Uh, it could be fit to a mobile device if a mobile device loads it, but everything will be tiny. And most importantly, when you scale the browser window, um, it doesn't do anything. It stays the same size. Even if the browser window goes too small, uh, it remains the same size. So it's effectively a stubborn layout with a fixed uh, static width. Now, the next thing is fluid. Uh, fluid width it sort of solves that problem, but it creates other problems. Uh, fluid width website is the width of the browser, and as the browser gets larger or smaller, uh, you can see how it's kind of elastic, how it flows with the browser getting larger or smaller. The problem is, as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, um, everything just gets smushed. It gets crunched. You can see the title here just got broken. Uh, column one, <laughs> column two. Uh, it, it's pretty bad. Uh, everything gets crunched. Uh, to the point that it's no longer practical. And the idea is that responsive design keeps the design practical all the time. So fluid is flawed. And adaptive sort of aims to solve that problem. That's our third one here. Adaptive aims to solve that problem by combining a static layout, so sort of the original uh, strategy here of web design, along with adapting to a browser getting smaller. See how it just switched from a three column layout to a two column layout? This is an adaptive design. And as we get even smaller down to mobile devices, uh, it adapts again. And font size can adapt. A lot of things can adapt. Uh, you can see here that the font size up here does not adapt. But uh, that's just so you get the point that it doesn't go from being this wide smoothly to being this wide. It jumps. Adaptive jumps. And these points here where it jumps are called breakpoints. And a lot of you, this is where it starts to get a little confusing because uh, these breakpoints are a big part of the new responsive design features of Adobe Muse. So people are thinking, okay, I use breakpoints, the site is therefore responsive. And that is not true. You could be using breakpoints with fixed layouts to create these um, adaptive websites. This is adaptive, not responsive. So now you might be saying, okay, I thought breakpoints made it uh, responsive, so then what is responsive? And the answer is very simple. Fluid plus adaptive really equals responsive. So you can see here, this looks very much like the fluid layout. In fact, if I switch back and forth, they look almost identical. The difference is with responsive, we also have those adaptive breakpoints. So you can see here that this is flexible, this is fluid, and everything looks good down to about here, and then it snaps. Because as it gets smaller and smaller, remember the fluid layout starts getting funky because everything gets too crunched. So before it gets too crunched, an adaptive breakpoint makes it switch layouts. So now that we've switched layouts, we're looking good again until we get a little bit more crunched and then it switches again. And now we're on the mobile version. You can see here in the header that the font changes size. From here to here, the spacing between the characters even changes a little bit. So it's just a little less wide. And you could say from here to here is probably from desktop to tablet. And then from here to here is probably from tablet to phone. And you guys, again, might be thinking, okay, adaptive kind of reminds me of the old Adobe Muse, where the old Adobe Muse allowed you to choose a layout for mobile, a layout for, well, specifically a phone, a layout for a tablet, a layout for a desktop computer, 
and uh, Adaptive's been around for a while. But again, this is based on breakpoints. Responsive also has these breakpoints, and breakpoints are new to Adobe Muse. So I want to stress this point real quick before we move on to other videos. Um, this is not based on the device. These breakpoints are not based on the device. They're based on the width of the viewport. So on a desktop computer, your, your viewport's a very, very simple and obvious thing. It's the browser window, which you can stretch, make bigger or smaller. On a tablet or on a phone, you have a fixed viewport size. You don't have a viewport that you can stretch and squish and stretch and squish. You might have a special app that does that, but the browsers built into tablets and built into phones don't really do that. So it's important to understand that you're not really designing for the device, you're designing for the size of the area that you're viewing the website on a particular device. So a phone happens to be smaller, a tablet happens to be in the middle most of the time, and uh, a desktop computer happens to be the largest most of the time. Uh, but those decisions, which we're gonna talk about next in a future video, those decisions shouldn't be made so much based on the device itself, uh, more so on the viewing size because what's best for a small device, what's best for a medium device, what's best for a large device, those are the kinds of questions that you should be asking. Not so much iPhone versus iPad uh, versus MacBook Pro, because um, not everyone has those exact devices. In fact, here's a little, here's a little fact. Um, there are more than, well, there are nearly, there are around 25,000 unique pieces of hardware running the Android operating system. So that just goes to show you, you can't exactly look at a brunch menu of uh, iPhone devices, iPhone 5, iPhone 4, uh, iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus, uh, because you're forgetting the 25,000 Android devices that could potentially be viewing your website. So it's important to know that we're designing for size, we're not designing for devices. The devices will figure it out based on their respective size. So just understand that Responsive will help you solve those problems without having to understand every individual device. So that's the idea of responsive versus static, fluid, and adaptive. And uh, go to responsiveorwhat.com, play with this, stretch the browser. If you guys are on a Mac, here's a cool trick. If you drag the edge of the browser window, it just scales it the way you'd expect it to by moving the right edge. If you hold the option key on your Mac when you drag the window, it scales both sides inward at the same time, which is more similar to the behavior within Adobe Muse. So that can be helpful if that's how you want to look at it and you want to make sure things are remaining centered and all that good stuff. Because it's hard to tell if something's staying centered when everything's moving and sliding. So that's a pretty neat trick. So hopefully you guys like this. Hopefully you guys like responsiveorwhat.com. Share it with your friends. Show it to your clients. It'll help them understand what you're trying to make for them and they can make an educated decision that way. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, and I've got plenty more responsive stuff coming soon.